police officers who were actually on this property at the time the incident occurred. They uh, were able to uh, get together, make entry into the theater, met quite a few people coming out. Uh, as they made their way into the crowd, they heard a shot. Uh, and upon entering the theater, the uh, suspect was found deceased from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Numerous victims who were wounded were uh, located. We also located uh, a deceased female and uh, immediately began uh, first aid. Uh, our local ambulance service, Acadian Ambulance Service, uh, had a pretty quick response time as well. Twelve ambulances were here within six minutes uh, to care for the victims and, and transport to local hospitals. Our shooter is John Russell Hauser, H-O-U-S-E-R. He's a white male, 59 years of age. He previously resided in the state of Alabama. He's kind of a drifter. He's been in Lafayette since early July, as far as we can tell. He was staying at a local motel on University Avenue. Um, we served a search warrant on that motel room at about 4.30 this morning. He was driving a 1995 Blue Lincoln Continental. We found uh, wigs and glasses and disguises basically in his room. His vehicle had a switched uh, license tag on it. Uh, it was parked right outside the, an exit door of the theater. Uh, it is apparent that he was uh, intent on shooting and then escaping. Uh, what happened is the, the quick law enforcement response forced him back uh, into the theater, at which time he uh, uh, shot himself. Uh, no devices were found uh, in his vehicle. No devices were found in the theater. As far as we know, one 40 caliber handgun is involved. That weapon has been recovered. Uh, it appears that at least 13 rounds were fired uh, during the time he was in the theater discharging the weapon. Our victims are Macy Bro, a white female, 21 years of age. She died on scene. Jillian Johnson, a white female, 33 years of age, died at the hospital. Of the nine victims that were hospitalized, Two have been released. One victim remains in critical condition. The quick response by law enforcement is believed to have prevented further deaths. We are appealing to the public to contact law enforcement if they feel they may know this shooter or have had contact with him because at this point we have very little information about him. We want the public to call this number, 337. 291-8650. That is a direct line into our investigation section and a person, a 24-hour, uh, it's a 24-hour number and a person will be monitoring that phone and answering calls. We ask if you have any information about Mr. Hauser to please contact law enforcement. Um, our crime scene technicians uh, work throughout the night to process the scene. As you can imagine, um, it's pretty horrific. Um, it's a large area to process for, for physical evidence. A lot of people upon exiting the theater left a lot of possessions behind. So we recovered keys and purses and shoes and, and whatnot. So um, we're still uh, working inside the theater. Uh, crime scene is still uh, doing some work in there. Uh, the theater has been made safe. There are no devices. We haven't detected any devices. We have not uh, found that uh, Mr. Hauser was working with anyone or associated with anyone. Uh, we haven't had any other threats at any other theaters. Uh, for now, this theater is, is closed until we can do uh, all of the work we need to do here to uh, try and piece together what happened. Uh, we will continue to update you uh, throughout the day uh, with uh, any information that uh, we come up with, any additional information that we come up with. I want to turn it over to uh, Colonel Mike Edmondson with the Louisiana State Police 
to give a recap of uh, his uh, office's involvement in this investigation. Can you spell the Yeah, R-U-S-S-E-L. First of all, I want to praise the efforts of, uh, of Chief Kraft and his men and the first responders, the emergency medical technicians that were here, those ambulances. Like you heard the governor say last night, as, as the danger was taking place inside, literally as those officers got there and shots were being fired, they went into it because they were worried about the individuals in there. You heard that at least 100 people were interviewed, uh, that many more, that many and a few more were actually in the theater itself. Um, I think it's going to be easy at this moment to kind of speculate. Here we are in Lafayette, Louisiana, in the middle of a neighborhood of a, of a movie theater. Why, why did he come here? Why did he do that? We don't know that. It's, it's not a possibly, let, let's say that it's a, a domestic situation. It, it wasn't. He's a guy that was a drifter, like the chief said, that just happened to be in this theater and, and took two beautiful lives. Don't lose sight of the fact that these two individuals had a vision, had a name, they had a future. And it, it wasn't to die as they did horribly in, in, this, uh, in this theater here. So let's remember that as, as we put information out there. We'll try to get you the facts uh, as we get them. Uh, he was in a local hotel. Uh, the, the police have been to that local hotel. They've been to his house in Alabama. They've talked to his friends. They talked to his family. That's why we didn't release that information uh, last night because we didn't want to put other police officers in harm's way. Look at an incident that happened at 7:30 last night, and and here we had the possibility of the car uh, having some type of explosive devices in it. You looked in the back seat. You saw what looked to be some wires. It didn't didn't turn out to be anything. We didn't know what was in the trunk. That's why we we. Uh, evacuated the people in that area and we actually remotely uh, went inside that car, had to blow out the windows, we had to, to, to do an explosion to open up the trunk portion of it, but we did that by, by uh, a robot because we didn't want to get a police officer to get hurt. At that point, we went into the movie theater, there was at least three objects that concerned us. We were able to x-ray those objects, deem them safe, and then completely clear the scene. We did that around 1.30. So in a situation where 13 gunshots were, were fired, a lot of different um, scenarios taking place. We were able to clear that and turn that back over to the Lafayette Police Department where you have the uh, technicians from the crime lab that are inside the building right now. Uh, they're trying to assess and find each one of those uh, those spent shells, find out exactly where those deceased bodies were. We've got to take pictures of that. We've got to try to figure out maybe there was a motive in determining how he went into the, to the theater. But certainly him coming out and seeing those police arriving put him back in there the way he ended his life. So he could have come out and done additional harm. That we that we suspect. But but to put a motive to it is just something that we simply can't do right now. I think you need to know that. And uh, we're going to support the, the Lafayette Police Department. We're going to help them with our detectives, narcotics, our intelligence fusion center. I think when you look at what happened here, within an hour, within minutes, police are on the All right, so you've been listening to that press conference. And, and national people were here. Uh, given all the, the information they could, all the help they could to try to help us as, as we work through this. So uh, again, a very, like I said last night, it was an ordinary moment, ordinary night, and it torn, turned into an extraordinary uh, situation that uh, still a lot of moving parts that we've got to try to put together and support the chief and support his team and, and bring closure uh, to the city of Lafayette for what happened last night. So we're going to continue to do that. And, uh, and try to try to find out what, what might could have happened. But please, you can help us. If you've got any information, the chief gave the number. We'll give it out again. Call us. Let us know whether you're in state or out of state, whether you saw this guy. Give us some information that we can try to put a motive and try to make sure there's nothing else out there. We don't expect it this time. You heard that there was a possibly an, another shooter. That wasn't the case. They closed another theater just as a precaution. Uh, they'll work with the theater to get that one back open. Uh, but I think it's important to know that we'll get the information to you just as quickly as we can. But we want to be mindful and respectful uh, of the situation of families that, that uh, had their lives turned upside down like that. What I'd like to do at this moment, and again, we'll, we'll come back and answer any questions y'all have, because I know we've got the, the mayor that wants to speak, but I want to turn it over to Governor Jindal, who was on the scene, uh, arrived with me last night on the scene. We were both in Baton Rouge when this happened. Uh, I was able to get the information to him quickly by speaking to the chief, uh, have his cell phone numbers. We talked all through the night, and then we were here on the scene also through the night. It's been a long night, so please work with us. Governor General. Thank you, Mike. I want to, first of all, commend our law enforcement heroes. As you heard, running towards that theater, even as there were sound of gunshots, potentially saving additional lives. I want to emphasize the gunman's original plan was to leave the theater alive. His car was parked at the exit. He 
as he was leaving in the crowd, trying to mingle in the crowd, he saw the law enforcement, local police officers, went back inside. That's when he shot and killed himself. Look, this was an awful, awful night for Lafayette, for Louisiana, for our entire country. There were amazing acts of heroism and selflessness that happened inside that theater. I think we're going to hear more of those as we continue to talk to witnesses and talk to those that were injured. Uh, a couple that I heard from last night as I went to the local hospital, two teachers here on summer break wanted to come see one final movie, come see a comedy as they were getting ready for school to start again. One teacher literally jumping over her friend, potentially saving her life. Second teacher thought that felt like that bullet would have hit her in the head if her, her friend hadn't jumped on her. The second teacher was shot anyway in the leg, had the presence of mind to pull that fire alarm. Who knows how many lives were saved just by that presence of mind. And I think we're going to hear more and more stories like this where friends were looking out for each other. But last night was also a heartbreaking night. I visited with family members who would rush to the emergency room, hoping and praying to God that it wasn't their loved one, wasn't their child who had been shot, either wounded or even worse, maybe even fatally wounded. We got had folks who had to cancel their vacations, had to come from all over the country, rushing back to Lafayette to make sure it wasn't their loved one, to provide support. I was at the emergency room. I saw family and friends who rushed there, and even when they found out their friend may have been uh, injured but not critically injured, weren't going to leave until they had seen the friend for themselves, waiting for hours. Saw a, a family priest there and saw others rush to those emergency rooms to try to provide that comfort. I, I will say this. Obviously, the people of Louisiana, the people of our, our great country, are very angry whenever something like this happens. We're angry about the evil that exists in our world, about these senseless, apparently senseless acts of violence. We're also tremendously saddened, tremendously saddened by the loss of life, the injuries, the disruption of these families. Now is the time to shower them with, their, with our thoughts, with our prayers, and with our love. I have no doubt that Lafayette will come through this. This is a resilient, a tough community. It's not going to be easy. There'll be tears. We're going to have to explain to our kids why bad things happen to good people. I say that not only as the governor of this great state, but as a husband and as a father. I got three young kids that go to the movies all the time during their summer break, and you know we're going to have to go back and explain to our children. It makes you want to hug your children a little tighter, and you makes you want to do everything you can to protect them. You want them to live their lives. You know, we will continue, the police will continue to investigate. I don't think we will ever truly be able to understand why something like this happens. We will get through this, it will be tough. When anybody in America is hurting, we're all hurting. When one family is hurt, we're all hurt. And I know this will bring us back even closer together. I want to emphasize, for those that aren't from here, this is a normal movie theater in a normal part of a normal town. This is anywhere USA. We're literally blocks from the local university. You never in a million years think it could happen here. You never want it to happen anywhere, but you never think it could happen here. You never think it could happen in Louisiana or Lafayette. This just shows these senseless acts of violence can literally happen anywhere.